Hello, Ken Spriggs here, uh, doing a um, uh, 2019 wrap up of uh, the year and, um, and basically talking about what I will be working on next or continuing next into the year 2020. Uh, so very good year, 2019 for me. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not terribly prolific in building a ton of models, um, but I do build some very intricate ones, some very detailed ones, and put a lot of work into them. Uh, so this year has been a very good one for me, though. Quite a few builds from the beginning on through um, till just recently. Uh, I built uh, my um, uh, little spin drift um, original model build with the desk. I finished up the 2001 Space Clipper in the um in the base for that i built the um one of my favorites and one of my best ones to date my little 1350 millennium falcon Mos Eisley display um and all three of those i won awards on uh at uh wonderfest some bronze awards i also won a first place at the ipms convention in chattanooga for my Mos Eisley diorama uh, I also uh, built up my 2001 Moon Bus, my tiny little build of that, which I'm very proud of. I built uh, my Halloween builds, my two of them, the um, black and white version of the Invisible Man, which I think is really awesome. And then I just completed my uh, scratch built and sculpt and kit bashed version of uh, the thing from another world, which I um, showed in my last video. Um, so. We're gonna be returning to my last build that I left off on, which it was my 3D printed Jupiter 2, my 1350 Jupiter 2, which I did one part of. Um, so let me go ahead and start off by showing you some footage that I filmed uh, actually before Halloween, before I switched off to Halloween and started working on those builds. And, uh, and it shows uh, my completion of the, um, of the engine core lighting and shows where I am on that. And then I'll talk about where that's gonna be going in the future. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I have the Fusion Core uh, completed as far as the lights are concerned. I just put the uh, interior on there to hold down the wiring a bit it's taped in as you can see but um, it's all uh, glued in place all six of the Z LEDs and then I have them wired into uh, three wires so the six wires are reduced down to three and they're coming out through a little hole that I drilled through in the back and that's going to have a piece of aluminum tube not this little piece it's going to have a it's going to be this thickness of two but it's going to go in and it's going to come out and it's going to curve and bend down through the through the uh, diorama and that's going to support the ship it's going to actually be raised up as if it's taking off with the landing gear extended um, but for now they're just coming out through the hole in the back so um let me go ahead and put a battery on that and i'll show you um, how that's going to look all right, so you can see it kind of fades all together, but you can see that it's rotating. It's, uh, it's a lot more obvious in person that it's rotating. It's going in a counterclockwise motion around. Let's see if I can get a better look at that. There you go. You can kind of see it. And you're just seeing it through the translucent interior. So let me go ahead and uh, show you how the bottom is going to look on that as well. All right, so I put the top of it on temporarily. I'm holding it in place so you can kind of see it looks kind of cool the interior is lighting up like that glowing through it that's not what it's going to look like when it's done but but there's the uh, rotating lights on the bottom looks pretty sweet okay, here it is from the side view it's a pretty awesome I think it did a good job with the 500 epoxy coming through the little little ribbed areas there 
to give that that flashing glow. So, okay. All right. So all I have to do is wire in the um, the top three lights into the wires in the center, in the bottom. I mean, uh, it'll be the same three wires coming out of the kit. But the top two will be glued in. <coughs> Excuse me. And it'll be wired into the same set, so they'll all run off the same circuit and flash in sequence. Okay, so we'll get that done next, and then I will start working on the interior. Here's the inside of the lighting. It's hard to kind of see it because it washes it out in the camera, but uh, and the wiring is all just kind of tucked in there in tape right now. I'll have it glued in a little bit tighter. Uh, before I'm done. I have it all going out through a hole in the back Which I'll have an aluminum tube going through and attached permanently and it all gets wired out here I just have it taped on for now, but it'll be underneath the base and then the top of it I Just have it taped on right now as well because I'm just testing it Turn it over here But there's a circuit up there in the top and I blacked out the window because I didn't want the light shining through Oops, and ruining the, the effect of the kit. All right, there you go. All right, so there's the footage that I had filmed uh, several months ago, actually, right before Halloween, um, of completing the uh, engine core for the Jupiter II, the 3D printed version that I got from Shapeways. Uh, I did mention in those um, videos that I was looking at doing some type of a diorama uh, where I would have it on a planet base and taking off and that sort of thing. That was the original idea. and um, But coming back to it, uh, and having thought about it for a little while, I decided to um, to go away from that idea, and instead I'm going to uh, use it for what it was originally designed for, uh, and that is to replace the um, the version that comes in the Mobius model of the derelict. Here's that kit right here. See a little Jupiter two. Uh, and um, the purpose of this original one is to be in the same scale, the 1350, and to uh, be more accurate and able to be lit up, which is what I'm doing, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and build this kit instead and, um, and have the Jupiter 2 flying outside of it with its lights rotating uh, and, um, and display it that way instead. I've been looking at some videos online, uh, primarily from uh, Lou Dalmasso because he built this kit and um, showed his struggles and the difficulty in getting the, the strange looking alien pattern and lines to, to appear on the outside of it using different types of paints and, and different techniques. So I'm gonna try to replicate what he did because he did a fantastic job and he um, has a great looking um, version of that of that ship the big one um, but uh, let me just show you here so as I showed here is the completed lighting for the top rotating dome I blacked out the front window but you can see it lighting up there a little bit in the side ones and then on the bottom looks pretty cool All right, so very realistic looking. 
And then there's an interior also, which I'm gonna build. And that's gonna have some lights in it as well. I'm not quite sure to what extent. I've already cut out the tubes and I'm gonna replace them with clear ones. Um, primarily, it's probably just gonna have the bluish looking back wall and then the clear tubes that are white. And then it's gonna be painted. But other than that, I'm probably not going to have um, a ton of lights just simply because you're not gonna see them as well on the inside. Um, but in comparison, here's the version that came with the kit. Now they're the same size, but a lot of inaccuracies on this one, which I wanna show you. First of all, look at the, look at the front cockpit window on the 3D printed one, which is very accurate compared to this one, which is not really at all. <laughs> you can see the angles aren't there. It's just not the way it's supposed to be. It's kind of hard to see some of the detail because it's clear, obviously. And then on the bottom, we have the, the engine grill, which is very small. And also, once again, not really in the proper scale. See how much larger that one is, more detailed. Yeah, this one's very tiny. I've seen people light this up in a way. I think there's even a kit for it, uh, but basically it would just like blink almost. Plus it would be very hard to mask off and, and not paint the part that's gonna light up. And you're certainly not gonna get the same type of separation between the little fins that you're gonna get on this one here, obviously. Uh, and then finally, the landing gear that it comes with is very tiny and fragile looking. Not very accurate. Really not even any kind of stairs of any kind on it. Whereas you have the 3D printed ones, which are very accurate right down to the really tiny steps. And it's even hollow in between them, which is really cool. Now I probably won't be using these. I'm thinking of doing it in flight so I won't use the landing gear uh, on the ship itself. But I'm not quite sure how I'm going to display it outside of the ship. Um, but that's the route that I'm gonna go with this. Uh, so I'll be doing, that'll be my next build, and I'll be doing the second part. I'm not going to consider this video as the second part of this, obviously. But I will be working on that beginning in the new year. And then um, finishing the interior to this. And then I'll start working on the derelict and figuring out how to get it all wired together. Uh, I do want to put together the the interior to the derelict that it comes with. It has some kind of cool looking paper inserts that have um, the interior to the um, to the ship with the idea that this would be parked inside. So I could still consider doing that, especially since I have landing gear, but we'll see. I, I like the idea of being able to see the ship better and really appreciate the lights and that sort of thing. So it's gonna be hard to do that if it's inside the ship. All right, so, um, so I'm definitely gonna go ahead and uh, continue working on this little tiny Jupiter II, and I think that's gonna be a pretty awesome build. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at, um, at the next kit that I'm gonna work on after that. All right, and as you saw from the previous stills, and may not have understood what it was, but uh, it is a 3D printed sprue of parts for the 1350 Millennium Falcon from Bandai. Uh, now I built this kit before. This was my Mos Eisley diorama. And I built it up and I used some of the parts uh, from Shapeways, from this same producer, to make that kit. Uh, he saw pictures of it and got in touch with me. 
and uh, and we had talked, and he was telling me that um, uh, he put all of his different parts together into one set for Shapeways because, uh, well, one because they encourage it in order to to um, be able to lower the price of the printing and offer it. Uh, he actually prior to this had four different sets uh, and there were some repeats in the sets. I ended up getting one of the sets that had most of the parts that I wanted. And so I did the, uh, the cockpit, the cockpit cone. I did the windows for the gunner stations. I had one of the gunner station, uh, actual stations inside the rear engine grill and then the replacement dish on top. And those are the only parts that I used. Uh, in order to get all of the parts, previously you had to buy three separate sets and they would run you about $61, give or take. And you would have some repeats of some of the parts. Uh, this new set runs $42 and has everything. This is everything that this uh, designer has made for this model. And it's pretty phenomenal. He's done a, ph a phenomenal job. The detail is incredible. It really is quite amazing. As you can see from the, uh, there's the rear engine grill that you can light up, which is awesome. Uh, you have the cockpit cone, which is accurate. You have two gunner stations. You even have a little tiny tube between them that has some ladder detail on it and a, a little part around it, this piece right here, that lets you light it. I believe it's made for a three millimeter SMD, but you can put another one in there. And that goes around it inside to light it. You have the landing ramp, different parts of that. You have the landing gear. Hold on a second. Angel, shut up! My cat back her meowing. She always knows when I'm doing a video and has to meow. Very intricate little landing gear, as you can see. You can see in there. It even has some replacement detail for the sides and the two, well, they, the little insets. I'm not quite sure if I will use those. Those might be the only ones I will not use necessarily because I really like the Bandai detail. The detail that they make is quite amazing down in there. I don't know that I need to replace like these little pieces in here or these ones here, anything like that. But pretty much everything else I'm going to be using, a little tiny cockpit. I lit from behind and I'll do again. So quite an amazing set. Very, very amazing. Definitely the best 3D printing I've seen up to this to this date. Of the ones that I've gotten from Shapeways. So quite amazing. So um, he asked me if I wanted to get a... Um, the first version, the first test shot of this, and I said that would be great, I'd love to do that. Uh, he did give me a discount on it, uh, so I wouldn't say this is necessarily sponsored, but I highly recommend his products for sure. If you wanna detail this little teeny kit and light it up and make it look amazing, this is the way to go. Um, and to date, this is one of my favorite builds, the, not this one obviously, but the one I did with Mos Eisley. Uh, and I won two different awards for it, I won a, a bronze award at Wonderfest, and I won first place in the sci-fi vehicle category at the IPMS Nationals in Chattanooga. So definitely, definitely um, highly recommend this. Uh, as I said, this build will be coming up after I complete the Jupiter II since I had begun that, and I wanna get that completed first. But then I'll be moving on to this one. And um, the idea that I have right now, and, uh, and that may adapt or change, we'll see. But I'm going to be using the landing gear. So I wanted it 
with that sticking out the landing gear. Uh, so I thought of some different ideas and none of them really were sparking my imagination. Uh, the only one I could really think of would be landing on the cloud city of Bespin on the landing pad, but um, not a whole lot of detail on that necessarily. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna reproduce the beginning, of, not the beginning, but the scene in um, The Force Awakens where Finn and Rey are escaping in the Falcon and it's got tarps draped off the back and it's dragging cords behind it and it wrecks into that platform or whatever that uh, big standing structure is. I always call it like a bus stop. I don't know what it's supposed to be. But I want to try to reproduce that, get some screen grabs, reproduce that, and have like the front of this smashing through that, through that uh, structure. And that would help as well because then I could discreetly run some wires or the 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 tube for the for the wiring through that into the structure down through the structure, so you're not going to see it. At least that's the idea for now. And then. Um, you know, and, and have it like it's in flight and just a little bit of a portion of the desert planet there. So, so uh, definitely want to work on this one. Very excited to do this kit again. Uh, and certainly being, um, being contacted by the designer of this marvelous 3D printed parts really encouraged me to do that. And then uh, see what I can do with all of the parts for the, for the ship. Uh, and then build that up. So, uh, so that'll be coming up here in the future as well. Once I complete my Jupiter 2 derelict uh, build. And, uh, and then we'll see what we can do with these here. So, uh, and I'll do the similar thing like I did on the other one where it'll be painted and weathered and, and have the decals on it and things like that. So, so definitely going to go out on that. And, uh, and I want to use some of the things I've learned from my last build from my thing from another world to come up with a tarp that's going to be rigid but look like it's flowing off the back so I have that piece of tarp sticking off the back with the engines lit up uh, in this particular one I'm going to go with the straight bright blue engines that are very distinct through the grills that you see in the force awakens um, now ironically and um, I hadn't really realized it at the time uh, because I didn't use the landing gear or buy the landing gear for the other one. But the version that I had originally that I made for Mos Eisley was the Force Awakens version. And, um, and I got that from the Resistance fighter set where you get two, two X-Wings and the Falcon. Um, the other parts works is fine with it, and you really don't see any differences. Uh, but after, um, but this particular one I got from this set here, the Blockade Runner and the Millennium Falcon. And I did that because I wanted to get the Blockade Runner, and I didn't have that before. And um, I already built the Blockade Runner. It didn't take me very long to build that. So at some point I'll do a quick paint up of this and show that getting completed, but that's not going to be with this kit, obviously. Um, I thought about maybe lighting up those engines, but that's going to be quite a task, being as there are 11 of them, and you have to bury some wires pretty good in there. Um, but anyway, back to my point. So the first one I did, that's when I used the round satellite dish because that one came with the curved one. And, um, and so this one, I'm not using the curved one. I'm, I, I'm using the curved one from the other set that I built. So it's the Force Awakens version. But the one big difference between the two is the landing gear. Uh, the one from the New, Ho New Hope only has one, two in the back, one in the front. It had three landing gear. Uh, starting with the Empire Strikes Back and forward, there are other sections coming out here and here and two other landing gears, so there are five total. So, um, so ironically, my most Eisley isn't accurate, even though it's not noticeable because you're not seeing the bottom of it. It has 
five closed landing gear instead of the three. And this one will be inaccurate as well because it's only gonna have three. <laughs> but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna be a perfectionist on it. Um, I got this kit because I could get it locally and I could get it at Hobby Lobby and use my 40% off on it. Um, and I wanted the blockade runner as well. So that was a win-win. Um, not to mention the fact that this set is designed now for a New Hope version. Just to let you know, if you decide to get it, it only has three landing gear. It's got the, the one in the front and the two double sets in the back. So it does not have the other two sets of landing gear that you would need to make the other versions of this ship. Um, now you could buy the other one, which I think runs you about $20, give or take, something like that. That has just the landing gear, it might even be less than that. <clears throat> and then augment this kit with it and, and do that. Um, so, but I'm not going to do that. For my purposes, again, you're going to see the top of the ship. You're going to see the landing gear a little bit, but it's not going to be that pronounced. You're going to mostly see the back of it. The front's going to be crashing into the structure, so you're not really going to see that. And I'm not going to worry about having uh, the three. Um, so there'll be a lot of modification like I did on the other one as far as like the windows here the cockpit, um, the back engine part, cutting out that little part there for the kit part so I can put the other one in it. Uh, the biggest part is gonna be cutting out the landing gear sections so the landing gear can be put in there. Um, but other than that, uh, I'm gonna go over that entire build and show how all these parts work. So again, I highly recommend this, um, the designer, the name on Shapeways is called the Age of Plastic. Uh, basically, if you simply go on there, and I'll put a link in the description below. If you go on to Shapeways and you search for Falcon 1350, you're going to find all the different sets that he offers, including this one. Um, or you could just search under the Age of Plastic, and you're going to find his, um, his different things. He offers other things as well. Um, but these... This is the entire set of all of the parts for this kit for the Bandai Millennium Falcon. So, okay. Give me a couple good shots of that. Oh, and it even has little quad guns in there, which are really cool. I ended up just using the ones the kit came with on my other one because I didn't have those either. But I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, try to use those as well on this. Modify those so they can go on the kit. All right. So, fantastic set. Definitely recommend it to take this to the to the nth level all right so i will be building that in the future so stay tuned all right so that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video uh stay tuned uh in the next uh coming weeks and i will be posting my second part of the uh, tiny jupiter 2 3d printed uh build and uh and continue working on the interior of that as well as beginning to work on the derelict and, uh, and getting that built up as well. All right, so uh, happy new year to everyone and happy holidays and I will see you all for modeling in 2020.